like to talk about something that could be a little bit of a curiosity, but also a topic that can sort of raise some interesting personal questions. Do I think in Sicilian or in Italian? So I think the question is interesting because from multiple perspectives. First of all, as you know, I'm Sicilian. So of course, I think perhaps the first answer you could get to is, well, he's Sicilian, so obviously Sicilian. But here's the thing. How different is it from standard Italian? Are Sicilian and standard Italian mutually understandable? And if not, does it feel like a different language? And, you know, I've seen people sometimes in the comments when, because I did make a video about Sicilian and Italian and how different they are. And I noticed sometimes like there were some people, uh, generally speaking from the north of Italy, who were like saying, nah, it's not a different language. I can understand Sicilian, no problem. That's what they said. And a couple of friends of mine, again, from the north, also said that. I said, oh, well, it's not a different language, I can understand it. Then I speak to them in Sicilian, or I type a whole comment in Sicilian, and they understand three words. No, they can't understand it. Like, literally. Almost nothing. Particularly if I kind of am a little witty about it and specifically choose to use words that I know that do not sound like Italian. So, yes, Sicilian is a different language. No questions asked. I mean, if you... It's true, there are some words that sound similar to Italian, obviously. It's very related to Italy. It's, so clearly there will be words that sound like Italian and words that don't. Um, and in fact, there are a lot of words that sound more like Latin than Italian. Like, for instance, the word for shield. I think everyone knows the word in Latin now, scutum. Um, with the M that is nasalized, if you really want to go for classical pronunciation. Uh, so really scutum, but the M is, is almost not there. And uh, Italian is scudo. Scudo. Sicilian is scutu. <laughs> so, <laughs> scutum, scutu. Sicilian is closer to Latin. And this happens quite a few times, also with grammar. Not as much as Sardinian. So Sardinian is probably the closest one because they still maintain some original GN uh, pronunciation um, as a gn. It's very interesting. Uh, and kentum, kentu, I think they say. Uh, so the C maintains the k sound of classical Latin fascinating stuff, but Sicilian is still quite close. Uh, so I do believe the Sicilian is a different language also because if the idea of, oh well, but some words are mutually in intelligible, so um, is it really a different language? Well, so are a lot of words in Spanish, but you still consider Spanish a different language, even though conversazione and conversación sound a lot like it, but they are different enough to be considered a different language. So I think I made my case. Sicilian is a different language. Now, uh, being brought up in Sicilian and Italian, because you see in my uh, family, my household, my mom is Sicilian and she speaks, and she kind of switches. She doesn't use Sicilian all the time, but she switches between standard and Sicilian. My dad, however, is from the north, so he does not speak Ita Sicilian, he does not understand Sicilian, and therefore he only speaks standard. And I, in my household, I mostly heard Italian and some Sicilian and then uh, together with my friends we kind of switched it kind of depended it could depend even at school in, in Sicily it depends where people are from some households are more Sicilian speaking and so the kids will tend to use Sicilian preferably rather than Italian and other kids like my case would tend to use more Italian at home and therefore they will prefer using Italian but they can still switch to Sicilian now uh, I, I know Sicilian and Italian the same if, if I were to choose a preference, yes, it would be standard Italian because of the fact that I used it more uh, back home, but I was brought up bilingual. Um, even though, again, you can't really consider it technically a different language, I can say, so, so I can't really say that Sicilian is my second language, I have to say that English is my second language, uh, but I can say that Sicilian is my second communicative system, and English is the third I've learned, and think that way we kind of... Um, surpassed this nomenclator, technical um, sort of position, scholar's position when it comes to what a language is and what a dialect is and what whatever. Communication system. As a communication system, it's definitely the second one. Um, the way it is when it comes to thinking, usually I think in Italian, but since when I read a lot of English or I watch movies in English or when I, the only person I talk to is my wife, who is obviously a native speaker of English, when that happens, I do tend to switch to English in my, my head. When I film a video, I'm, I'm not thinking in Italian first and then translating, I'm thinking in English directly. And I do dream in English a lot. 
And of course, if I can do that with my third communicative system, I can clearly do it in Sicilian. So when I do speak Sicilian with my friends, usually when we joke, or, or if I'm watching something in Sicilian for whatever reason, uh, or I'm reading some Sicilian poetry, I will tend to, to start thinking in Sicilian, so it kind of switches. Italian is the primary main language in my head, but even when I, when I was in Japan, I was thinking in Japanese and dreaming in Japanese most of the time. Uh, so yes, it answers, I, I kind of answers this little curiosity question about me specifically, but I think it also raises an interesting question when it comes to people who are brought up bilingually. Whether you call Sicilian a language or a dialect, one thing that kids who tend to switch between the two, uh, and the same happens with people who learn two dialects, like people who speak Cantonese, but also learn Mandarin very early in their life, people who are used to switch between two different ways to have a set of different words to say the same thing, I think when you are brought up like that, like that, you technically are brought up as a bilingual. Whether the government or cultures consider your second system a language or a dialect. And something like that really helps when it comes to attaining uh, fluency and mastery over another language. Not that I'm saying that I'm a master in English or in Japanese, I'm not, but I'm fluent enough to be able to turn on the camera and make a video even in English or in Japanese, even though they're not scripted. And I think that that's a level that we would all be content with. If you could just right now pick a language, language of your dream and get to this level, not a master, but you would be content with it. And um, I think it really helps when you, you know, even when you have like two different ways to say loads of things around you and you are used to changing between them. Sometimes you do it for a joke, sometimes in a playful way. Other times I remember speaking to my cousin and we would use some terms that were Sicilian and then my other cousin who is from Milan would come in the room and we would have to switch. We would have to say the same thing. He was like, hey, what are you talking about? So we would repeat the same thing, but now using standard. And we did this throughout the entirety of my life. I mean, I don't remember, I do not recall one moment in my life when I didn't have at least two sets of words for everything. So, uh, and again, sometimes they're similar, sometimes they're completely different when it comes to Sicilian, to standard Italian. So in a way, I think that thinking in another language is absolutely possible, but it is easier for people who are used to it. And therefore, if you are considering uh, learning a second language for the first time, so you, have a, you were only brought up with, say, English, and you're like, yeah, I know a couple of expressions that are either so only like, I don't know, Liverpoolian, Cockney, uh, American, Deep South and Deep Southern American, New York, whatever. You've got your little expressions, but you don't have like a completely, you don't have everything doubled. You don't have two ways to say water, two ways to say chair, two ways to say to walk, two ways to say wake up, whatever. It's like, for example, to scream, to yell in Italian is gridare, in Sicilian is abbagnare. So they, they have nothing to do with each other. And I'm saying if, if, you, if you don't have that, then it might be a little harder for you to reach fluency in a language. But it isn't impossible, I've seen it happen. I mean, when I was a full-time teacher, and I remember teaching this lady in her 70s, and she got to the point that, of course, she wasn't fluent fluent in English, but she could no problem watch, she, she could watch a whole movie in English, no problem, and she could express herself. And I'm sure that most of you are a lot younger than that. Like if you're 18, 20, 25, even 30, no big deal at all, you can do it, no problem. But as a person who was brought up with all of this, with this sort of, little special ability. I cannot stress enough the importance of everyday words, speech, to be able to develop an ability, a skill, when it comes to, you know, le language learning and fluency. People think that they just need to, you know, take the time, you know, we've got to sit down and now it's four in the afternoon, you've got your two hours, three hours until seven, you are studying the language. You've got to sit at the desk, open the notebook, take your notes, speak hopefully some people don't even say things out loud they just read them which is insane if you want to learn how to speak um you know translating watching your things great and then in, in a lot of people's idea at seven you finished and then you go out drink a beer do your thing watch your things in your own language and you completely forget about it and that's not how it works if you really want to gain fluency in multiple languages also because I know a lot of people say like oh I'd like to learn some Spanish some Italian some French a bit of Japanese but I'm also interested in Chinese yeah good luck with that it's not that it's impossible but if you do it this way what I've just said today is the day that I study a little bit in the afternoon and then I go back it's never gonna happen if you want it to happen you need to do what we bilingual people do make it part of your entire life every day 
all day, all the time. It needs to be something linked to the things you like and your passions. The first vocabulary I've learned when it comes to English had to do with video games and role playing games and it's not a problem. Of course eventually you have to learn also boring stuff but, in, but first if you start to train your brain uh, into the idea of I've got to create two, three separate paths or pathways in my synapses to, this, for, to represent the same thing, the same object but in different ways in a way that I can alternate them without having to think then you need to start doing it with the things you like. So my suggestion is you're playing a game, switch it to the language you, you're learning if you have, if you're not a complete beginner. If you're a beginner, maybe perhaps start creating a little bit of a few lists, like, you know, food you like, uh, that you tend to eat a lot, places that you tend to go to, rooms in the house that you tend to spend most of your time in, objects around you, friends, the things you wear, all of these things that are daily are the things that you can practice with and then put them together with the things you like. If you like medieval weapons, learn how to say all the different weapons in the language that you're trying to learn. I know people might think, well, that's kind of weird. I mean, I don't even know how to order a coffee and I know how to say spear, lance and shield and, and greaves, but that's fine because it doesn't matter what they are if what you're trying to do is develop an ability. Then you will work on your priority list, of course. And I hope that this was useful as a little personal experience, perhaps even learning tutorial. Thank you very much for watching as always and thank you for your continuous support. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and also if you are learning a second or a third language, please let me know where they are in the comments.